What's up, students? It's Dustin. I'm back today on Memorial Weekend. We got a cool uh, youth group tonight and Zoom call tonight, so make sure you are part of all of that. Maybe this weekend you're able to hang out with family and friends. Finally, things are starting to open up. Make sure you're socially distant, though, right? We don't want to get anybody sick. Uh, so today on this group, we have Josh Valdez doing some worship. I'll be jumping in here at the end to talk about the uh, couple things before you go. And then uh, we've got some really cool things, announcements planned as well. So uh, let's get started. Here's the first thing. Hey, how's it going? Uh, this is a part where I like to call it dad jokes. And I've got two uh, dad joke experts here with me. So I'm going to say some dad jokes and I'm going to see if I can make, make anybody laugh. All right. So uh, I've got I've got some dad jokes here. Let's let's see. So uh, all right, you guys ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. They're ready to go. Here we go. First dad joke. Uh, how do you make a Kleenex dance? Mm. You guys know? You don't know? Oh, I know this one. Put a little boogie in it. Yeah, I know that one. You know that one. All right. Well, that happens. All right. All right. Hold on. We're gonna wait for this siren to go away. Go away, siren. I did it. Good job. You're in control of it, I guess, huh? All right. Anyway. Uh, all right. So how about next joke is, uh, what is brown and sticky? Brown and sticky. I know. You know? What's brown and sticky? This. This? <laughs> Your hands. Her hands are probably brown and sticky. All right. What else? Poop. poop. All right. Poop. Uh, actually, a stick. Stick is brown and sticky, right? Stick. All right, anyway. Uh, all right, next joke. Uh, why can't you hear a psychiatrist using the bathroom? I know. You don't know? Because the P is silent. Mm -hmm. Nothing? All right, nothing? All right, fair enough. Oh, all right. It took me a second to figure out. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how to spell that word, but I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the P is silent at the beginning. Yeah, all right. All right, here we go. Uh, next joke. So, uh, if you see a crime at an Apple store, does that make you an eyewitness? Mm. <laughs> okay. Mm. All right, here we go. This is a good one. What concert only costs 45 cents? Mm. Mm. Do you know? You don't know? Neither one of you? It's a uh, 50 cent featuring Nickelback. I don't get that one. All right, well, they're both bands, so it's, it's funny games. for some so people. I all right. Uh, what do you call a fish with two knees? I know. You don't know? All right. Uh, a tuny fish. <laughs> like tuna, but tuny fish? No? Okay. No, it's okay. If I had gotten that fish, I might have laughed. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. Uh, did you hear the rumor about the butter? Mm -mm. Well, I'm not going to spread it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, last joke. You guys ready? This is yes. a really good one. It's a really good one. Last joke. Here we go. What's an astronaut's favorite part of the computer? Uh -huh. I don't know either. The space bar. <laughs> All right, well, there you have it. It's Dad Jokes with Dustin and Laylin and Lauren. Here we go. Let's go see uh, what's next. Hey, hope you like some of those dad jokes. I know my daughter's didn't really get a lot of them, so hopefully you did. Uh, hopefully you found them somewhat funny. Anyway, let's uh, give you a couple of announcements. The first thing, first big thing, and this is the first time it's being announced, on June 5th, it's a Friday night, we're going to meet at the church at 9 o'clock, and we're going to do an outdoor drive-in movie. So you can bring a lawn chair, you can bring your car, we'll have a screen set up with a movie. Uh, movie is to be determined. I'll probably have some sort of link for you guys to uh, vote on the movie that we're going to see. But uh, it's going to be uh, just a night where we actually finally get together. We're going to be socially distanced, but we're also going to be able to sit down and watch a movie together and uh, kind of make it feel more like normal for us. Anyway, so that's June 5th is movie night at the church. Come at nine o'clock. I will have some like individually bagged chips and also some cans of pop and things like that for you. But if you'd like to bring your own special snacks, feel free to do that. Keep them for yourself though, right? Because we're socially distanced. We're not gonna be sharing a lot of things together, but I'll have those opportunity options for you. 
and uh, make sure uh, you mark your calendars for that. I'd love to see you there and it's gonna be a great movie time. All right, movie time and uh, we'll see you so you can come hang out. It'll be great. Anyway, uh, next thing, VBX. I've been talking about this. Maybe you watched Service today and you saw John Buckles give a big shout out to the VBX uh, that it's making it happen. I don't know if you've noticed, but most churches in our area have either canceled VBS or VBX or they have done everything online. And so what we're trying to do is create a space for families and kids to actually go out and do something because it feels like we're just all stuck in right now. Um, and so we have created this incredible VBX experience. It's going to be in different parks across Westerville. People are going to be moving around just like Amazing Race. We're going to need people to help us out with that. Um, and so if that's something you want to do, make sure you go to the Heritage website and uh, click on VBX. And uh, we're going to have signups and everything else up there very, very soon. But make sure you do that because we do need your help. Just a reminder that camp is canceled uh, I am looking at some opportunities to maybe early fall, that sort of thing. Um, obviously, a lot of that is contingent on our high school director that we're looking for right now. And uh, we are in the middle in the process of looking through multiple candidates. We've already connected with several. We've got a few more that I'm going to connect with even this week with the team. And then uh, we're going to go through and keep doing that. If you have any other suggestions of students who should be on the interview team, please send them to me because the beginning of June, we're planning to start uh, having some candidates come in and actually interview with some parents and with some students. And so we need to have those very, 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 very soon, like now. Anyway, so uh, so go ahead and send those in to me. If you got my number, you can text me. You can also go through GroupMe and uh, do that. Or you can even DM through uh, YouTube and uh, let us know if you have anybody that you think that we need to connect with as well. So uh, we're going to kind of bring things down. Let me pray. And then we're going to go right into Josh and his uh, this worship song that he has for us today. Here we go. Let's pray. God, thank you for today, and thank you that it is Memorial Day, God, and we can remember the people who have passed away in order to protect our freedom. Thank you, God, that there have been so many men and women who have given their lives for us. God, let us not forget that during this Memorial Day. Um, God, I know it's a good day that we get to, that oftentimes it's the end of school, it's the beginning of, of summer. God, let us not forget the incredible sacrifices that men and women and their families have given up in order for us to do that. God, I pray for the worship today. I pray for the message that you would just be here with us. That we would feel your presence, even in the comfort of our own bedroom by ourselves, watching this on our phone or whatever, wherever we are, God. Um, thank you for today. Thank you for sunshine. Thank you that you can uh, be with us and guide and direct us. Pray all these things in your name. Amen. All right, let's go. Hey, what's up, everybody? Josh here, and I hope you're doing great and fantastic. Uh, welcome to my room. This is where pretty much I spend my time, even though uh, before quarantine, I still spend a lot of time here doing music and designs and a lot of fun stuff. Uh, let's worship together.
So the beginning of May, I started this series called Before You Go. And the idea was there are some things that I feel like you need to know before you go. Before you go to the next thing. And so whether that is you're, you're moving into a new grade next year, or maybe you've graduated, you're going to college or work life or whatever that looks like. Uh, these are things that I feel like everybody needs to know as they go along their way. Now, the other side of that, too, is that, so if you think about it, I've been doing student ministry for about 20 years, only about six at Heritage, and uh, I am now, my role is shifting a lot, and, uh, and so I'm working on finding somebody who can help out with high school, you know, moving forward, and so there's some of part of me as well that uh, is grieving the way that the end of the school year happened, and even more than that, I want to know that there are things that I can tell you before I go to the next step of what God's called for me as well. And so today we're going to look at two more different things that I want you to know before you go. Next week we're going to finish up this whole series with the last two things you need to know before we go. And I hope that they've been helpful for you. I hope that you can go back to them and find out about them. Last week Robin spoke about what she hopes that you know before you go as well. And uh, that was really helpful for me to hear some things from her as well. And so I hope that today that this finds you well and that you're having a good day and we're going to get started right now. So we're like, I don't know, 10 weeks into this whole uh, socially distant and COVID-19 and coronavirus and all these crazy words out there. And I know for me, it's been a little uh, unsure of how to like how to go forward and and how to do like life as I know it. And uh, maybe for you, maybe that's how it's been for you as well. And I was thinking about like, uh, I feel like to be a Christian, it's important to have a community around you, right? Man, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But right now, it's been really difficult to have that. And maybe you are at home and you've been trying to watch these videos, you've been trying to do the Zoom call, that sort of thing, or maybe you haven't. Uh, but I, I would imagine after talking to multiple students, that it's been a really kind of lonely, weird time for many of us. And maybe you've been like fighting with mom and dad to have somebody come over or to talk to somebody. Maybe you've been able to do it on the phone or whatever or through DMs or whatever, but it's just not the same. And you've been like, can I have somebody come over? Or can I go somewhere? And your parents have been back and forth about whether that's good or who it is or how, what they've been doing, all those sort of things. It's been really, really difficult. I know that there's like a hundred different perspectives of what we should be doing and what we should be doing as a, an American and what we should be doing as a fellow citizen and all these sort of things have been swirling around in the world around us. And if you watch the news, it gets even crazier. Here's the problem though. When I read the Bible, I feel even more guilt almost in what we've been doing. Here, check this out. All right, I'm going to read uh, Hebrews 10 and I'm going to read uh, just a couple uh, verses here. Verses... Uh, uh, 23 through 25, right? So Hebrews 10, 23 through 25, it says this, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Now, to some extent, that's a, that's a verse that maybe you've heard before. I think I've talked about it before at Heritage. And, uh, you know, it's a verse that a lot of people know and a lot of people trust, right? Uh, but the problem is, is that it talks about, like, let us not stop meeting together with one another. Well, how am I supposed to do that with this whole COVID-19 thing happening, right? I mean, I, I'm not even supposed to leave my house unless it's an emergency. And if you're in another state, it's even more locked down, right? And so it can be really confusing of what should we be doing uh, what is, like, what do we want to do? What is the governor and the government telling us that we should do? What is the Bible telling us to do? What are our parents telling us what to do? What about the people around us? How do we keep people safe? But how do we also keep living our lives? There's just so many different questions about this right now in our time. And then I even think about my own life, uh, going off to college and graduating and all those sort of things, and it becomes complicated. As I look back, like in high school, I remember so many of my friends, uh, we started off early in uh, middle school together in youth group. And then as like middle school went on, we pretty much stayed together and then high school hit. And then it was through high school that a number of my good friends in youth group, I started seeing less and less of them at youth group. 
In fact, by my junior and senior year, oftentimes many of them didn't really have time for youth group anymore. It's, it's almost like a natural progression that happens. Uh, it's, I don't think it is natural. I probably shouldn't say natural, but it's just, it's something that seems to happen in every single youth group I've ever known that the older that they get, the more, uh, difficult it is for them to find them in a youth group anymore. And then graduation hits. And I can tell you even more so that for college students, it's really, really difficult to find space to be in community with other believers. It's really, really difficult to find your space when you're in college at a church. Just being honest, that's statistics show that and the churches in our area show that and heritage at this point shows that as well. It's really, it's just really hard. And so, uh, but here's the thing, God encourages us to find community, whatever that looks like. And so whether, when you're going off to college, when you're going off to work, when you're in high school, wherever you are, you've got to find your people and not just your people. You got to find followers that are following Jesus and pushing you to do that as well. Sometimes it's really easy to get into a friend group that doesn't really know who Jesus is and feel like you, like at least you belong. And the, the problem is, is that oftentimes those relationships don't lead you down a solid path. And, uh, and so I just encourage you, if you don't have a group that you're regularly meeting up with, maybe you're just, maybe you found this video and you're like, I don't know. Maybe uh, you are part of our youth group and you're kind of watching from the fringes. I highly encourage you to, to come to group when we start back up here to do this, to do our Zoom group, to find those spaces where you can have community and have people around you who know you and love you and who are pushing you toward Jesus. It's super important. In fact, it's one of the most important things that God has for you. Now, the second thing we wanna talk about today, so if the first thing is find your community or stay in community, the second thing is, is that you need to find someone who can mentor you. Someone who can step into your life and keep pushing you toward following Jesus. Uh, someone who's already been there and done that. And so you need someone who can do that for you, but then you also need to do that for someone as well. Check this out. In uh, 2 Timothy 2, 2, it says this, You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. Now, what I love about this is this is Paul talking to Timothy, right? And so Paul's saying, look, Timothy, you have heard me share these things with you. I've taught you everything you need to know. I've been mentoring you. I've been instructing you. You've been taught all those sort of things. Now teach those to the next person, right? So I, I taught you. Now you teach others. And so you, for you here right now. So uh, find your community. That's great. But even more than that, Find someone who can pour their life into you, who's been there already, who's, who's done the things that, you, that you've done. Maybe they've gone to Westville City Schools and they've gone to college and, or they've started work or whatever it is, and they can tell you what they learned through that process. And not only that, but they can talk to you spiritually about what it means to follow Jesus in the midst of all of that change as well. It's highly important. And then from that, you learn it and then you do the same thing to someone else. That's what I love about youth ministry in general is that we oftentimes have so many different people who are highly invested at, during college and uh, into young adulthood that are pouring back into our high school students right there. And then our high school students at Heritage, oftentimes we have many of them that help out in middle school and in elementary classes as well. It's the same thing that Paul is teaching Timothy of pouring into the people behind you and then having someone who's pouring into you from ahead. And so that's why I love Sam and Amber being involved in both middle school and high school. Maggie and I and Robin and Billy have all been doing this for a long time as well. And we were in those same spaces that you're in, although less coronavirus then, just being honest. Uh, we. Uh, we have, uh, you know, Allie Hammond's been highly involved. Steven Turner, while he was doing his undergrad work, has been involved. Uh, we've got, there's so many people, I don't even, I can't even remember everybody right now. But through the years, so many different people have been pouring into the, to the students here at Heritage. And I'm so thankful for that. And so for you, make sure you find someone who can pour into you. But even more than that, make sure you, and maybe that looks like, if you're graduating this year, maybe that looks like, hey, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna go to school close by, or I'm gonna work or whatever, and I'm gonna continue to help out in students or in elementary or whatever that looks like. Uh, so many have been doing that and it's so incredible to see them actively involved and engaged in ministry all around. 
Hey, just to close this down, I just remember, I would love to see you on June 5th for our drive-in movie. Uh, it's going to be right there at the church. We'll meet up about 9 o'clock. I'll have a few like individual snacks that are there. You can grab those, and we're going to watch a movie together. And it'll be our first time together since all of this happened. And uh, watch out for more updates on more opportunities for us to get together. So my prayer for you is that you find your community and you find somebody who's pouring into you. And I uh, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.